prior to driving this new i350 pickup truck my last test drive of an isuzu product was many years ago when the viacross was still around as it turns out that was the last radically styled vehicle that isuzu could call its own since stalwarts like the trooper rodeo and amigo have gone away and for years now isuzu has been getting by in the states on rebadged versions of the chevy trailblazer in five and seven passenger forms known as the ascender Ascender 7 passenger models were discontinued earlier in the year. And last year, Isuzu added this pickup, essentially a rebadged Chevy Colorado built at the same plant in Louisiana. So Isuzu currently has only one SUV and one pickup truck. Available in two different configurations, the two-wheel drive i280 comes as an extended cab model with a four-cylinder engine, and for the step up, there's the i350 with four-wheel drive in four-door crew cab form and equipped with an automatic transmission. The i350 takes a big step up in equipment level and price. With the base price of $27,358, the i350 costs over $10,000 more than a base i280, of course before any discounts. The engine is the same one found in all of the Colorado-based vehicles like the GMC Canyon and Hummer H3. It's a 3.5 liter 5-cylinder making 220 horsepower. Whereas that's not enough juice for the H3, the Isuzu feels quite lively with that much power moving through a 4-speed auto. The 4-wheel drive system also includes a 2-speed transfer case and an automatic locking rear differential for real pickup truck duty. Towing capacity is rated at 4,000 pounds with a payload capacity of 1,190 pounds. Unlike its GM brethren, the Isuzu i350 only has one option package available, and that's a $1,839 limited group that adds leather, heated power seats, a CD changer, an auto-dimming mirror, and sliding rear window. Bottom line here is, is that the Isuzu is a fine pickup. For some inexplicable reason, I find it to be much more compelling than the Colorado I drove several years back. Not only does the i350 have better front-end styling, but the interior seems livelier and more quality-driven as well. Call me nuts, but I'd hunt down an Isuzu dealer, if I could still find one, and inquire about making a deal. That is, if you're not hung up on suspension and configuration options, because the i350 has none, and the Colorado has a billion. But here's the bad news. Though the Isuzu has a powertrain warranty more than twice as long as the Chevy's, the pricing is nearly identical. And frankly, where does Isuzu get off trying to do that? Drop the price from $28,000 to around $23,000, and then the Isuzu would make more sense. Yes, there's exclusivity in driving an Isuzu these days, seeing as how everyone that I encountered asked the same question, they're still around? But it's not the kind for which to pay extra. For Drive Time on Car TV, I'm Steve Hammes.